through experience, we all have more to learn. We learn through experience, through those who are different from us, through nature, and through trial and error. We learn through solitary reflection and through animated conversation. We learn through our hearts as well as through our minds. Learning is not only academic, it is experiential and spiritual and communal. In addition to the obvious benefits of continuing to learn new things, adopting the attitude of a lifelong learning also keeps us in a state of humility. Mm -hmm. We know what we don't know, and we can't and we don't assume we know everything. With each relationship we enter into, we consider, what can I learn from this person? What might God want to teach me? The other person need not be educated or even an adult. We can still learn from them. Learning and teaching are not mutually exclusive. Rather, they are each more effective when they run in parallel. Amen. There is uh, something that, that I've gathered from, from, I think it was Keith Drury. Uh, he taught a, a graduate program at Asbury University, and it's this. That your, your brain is divided up into three places. One is you know that you know. It's what color is this? That's blue. You know that you know. And it's like, what's the molecular <coughs> structure of water? Well, I know, or, or mercury. Oh, that's an element. Uh, whatever, a plastic. I know that I don't know, which is another smaller part of your brain. But the majority of your brain is this. You don't know. You don't know. That's the truth. And, and if we would just simply gravitate to that, the fact that we don't know, we don't know. That would really, that haughty spirit of, well, I know this. No, we just have to be gravitating to the area that, that you're familiar with. But the truth is, the largest part of your brain is, you don't know, you don't know. That's and true. I think that creates I, a humble I know spirit. That you yes. don't know. No, okay. Thank you. That's called transference. Thank you, Carl, for doing that. Yeah. All right. So uh, uh, this is a little deeper. Now, it's fun to talk about money because we all have stories and we all have something to say. But when it comes to lifelong learning, anybody got something to kind of throw in the hopper there? Why is, it, why is engaging in lifelong learning so important? Well... The old man with the beard here. Yes, sir. Um, humility. I mean, that was that came up in the paragraph. Uh, keep, it also, learning also keeps us in a state of humility. Remain teachable. No matter how old you are, mm -hmm. you don't know everything. And just remain teachable. And that remaining teachable goes with the humility. You know what I mean? You're, you're, you're saying, okay, I'm still willing to learn something. I'm not done yet. Mm -hmm. Right. I'm not done yet. And then God is this all-powerful, you know, omnipotent being that we can never completely know, but it builds our relationship to mm -hmm. continually know him more. Mm -hmm. That's good. That's you, can't live, you can't live in yesterday if you're looking for tomorrow. You got that from a fortune cookie somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> I also knew, knew before I knew, like when it comes to the spiritual thing, like you were saying, yep. I knew, but yep. I didn't know that mm -hmm. was true. Or not. Yeah. 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 I think something like that just deserves about two paragraphs of definition, but we all know what you're saying. There's an awareness that this is the truth, though you haven't yet comprehended it. And I think the reason why is being it's a revelation from God because He wants relationship. Mm -hmm. well, cool. Just physically, your doctor tells you to keep on doing something with your brain because you don't use it, you lose it. I guess. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know for me in my in my work. <laughs> um, it, it, it. So, Dennis, I, if you wasn't blushing, nobody would think a thing about it. Go, Phoenix, go. I know in, in my work, right, you hang drywall and you take the mud, right, a certain way. Boom, boom, but yeah. if I just stick with the techniques of what we were doing 20 years ago, 
as opposed to what's out there now, I can't. I, I cannot compete with a guy who has a tool that's uh, it's called a mud pan, and all he has to do is go over the thing, and it's done. As opposed to me getting on a ladder where I'm sitting still, one coat, wait for that to dry, another coat, and then skim the finish. I have to be open-minded to be like, well, yeah, this is how we used to do this but there's a new way of doing things. And if I'm not open it, I can't stay competitive. And I guess it works both ways in, in, in your spiritual walk too, not competitive, but just prepared. Absolutely, yeah. It's become hardened yeah. if you're not open. Yeah, it's kind of cool. The, the very first one they talk about is humility. And that is just, remember this, that you may know something, but if you're not at the, at the level of your development to use it, you have knowledge but you don't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. you, ha you, you understand it. Or let me say, you know about it, you just don't understand it because application isn't there yet. So, so the accumulation of knowledge and the use uh, of, of wisdom, the application of knowledge is wisdom. I think you know, that's what it comes down to this lifelong learning is that uh, you, you learn from others, you learn from your own experiences. What's been the best teacher that you've ever experienced? Hard knocks. Thank you. Hard knocks. <laughs> Failure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Those are lessons that we say, I'll never do that again. Absolutely. It changes, it changes our life. It's like, uh-uh. No, you'll never get me to do that again. I've experienced that. You know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Any, what else is involved in lifelong learning? Some of you, come on, some of you guys have been in the waiting, you know, many, many years. What's the value of laughing at yourself? If you haven't learned that yet, you need to learn that. Teacher, I'm getting angry. <laughs> You've got to learn to laugh at yourself. You do. Because if all it takes is someone to snicker about you, to derail you, you will never intimidate the enemy. Because there will always be somebody that can point something out and say, you're such a fool. And boom, there you go. So lifelong learning is, uh, I think there's something about learning from your experiences, learning from others. Be open. And I think uh, Timothy and Titus is told by Paul, if a man or a lady, if a person is to be a leader in the church, they are to be learners. Thank you, Josh Edwards. They're to be learners. They're, to, they're to easily to be taught because there's always something you can learn. Let's, let's uh, read some scripture there in Deuteronomy, the, the second law, and Matthew, a couple of small verses there. Uh, somebody read those two, and uh, let's discuss those. Lifelong learning. These are the commands, decrees, and laws the Lord your God directed me to teach you to observe in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to possess so that you, your children, and their children after them may fear the Lord, your God, as long as you live by keeping all his decrees and commands I give you, and so that you may enjoy long life. Hear, Israel, and be careful to obey, so that it may go well with you, and that you may increase greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey, just as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, promised you. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home and when you walk along the road, when you lie down and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands and bind them on your foreheads. Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. When the Lord your God brings you into the land he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to give you a land with large flourishing cities you did not build, houses filled with all kinds of good things you did not provide, wells you did not dig, and vineyards and olive groves you did not plant. Then, 
when you eat and are satisfied, be careful that you do not forget the Lord who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. Amen. All right, so in Matthew chapter 6, verse 26 through 34. Look at, the bird, look at the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are, not, are you not much more valuable than they? Can any one of you worrying add a single hour to your life? And why do you worry about the clothes? See how the flowers of the fields grow? They do not labor or spin. Yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the fields, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you, you of little faith? So don't worry, saying, what shall I eat, or what shall I drink, or what shall I wear? For the pagans run after all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Amen. Amen. Good wisdom there. All right, life, lifelong learning. Let's let's uh, talk about that. Kind of go into your small groups. Take a little time. Discuss that. Uh, things that popped out from the scripture. Things you noticed surprised you. And things that you believe God has highlighted to you. We want to just have a pattern of, of discussion. Uh, free uh, group leaders, please make sure that someone doesn't dominate the conversation, okay? The challenge is to try to get every person in your group to share something, okay? Go for it. Thank <laughs> you.